Cal Mom here at the 2012 LA Auto Show, and we're going to find out all about all the new technologies you're going to see inside your cars. Okay, so Qualcomm is a wireless technology provider. We provide the chips that go inside many of the smartphones and tablets and consumer devices that people use today. But connectivity is also coming to the car as well. So Qualcomm's technologies are bringing 3G and LTE to the car so that we can enable browsing and viewing and streaming audio and streaming video whilst we're in the car in exactly the same way as we experience you know, the, 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 the internet and the power of, of everything that's available online in our other the devices. So Qualcomm works with all of the auto OEMs and the tier ones, the providers of hardware, to bring wireless technology and also the computing power of our Snapdragon products into vehicles. Uh, we've got several demonstrations showing not only how you can pair your cell phone over technologies like Wi-Fi to the head unit and to the rear seat entertainment of the car, but then also how you can embed 3G and 4G technologies directly into the vehicle to make the connected lifestyle part of being behind the wheel exactly the, the way it is in every other part of our daily life. Exciting. What new thing coming down the road are you most excited about? LTE is a big thing. You know, many of the, the network providers, and there are network providers here, are bringing LTE to our everyday devices. They and we also want to bring LTE to the car so that we've got the high stream, high data rate, ubiquitous data when we're driving, exactly the same way as we've got it everywhere else. Okay, so tell me what it is you guys do. Hi, Donna. Um, so what we're doing is creating a technology to allow uh, folks to collect, connect smartphones to the radios uh, in their vehicles. Uh, they support a technology called MirrorLink. The idea behind MirrorLink is to create a less distracted driving environment for uh, the operators of vehicles. We know people are going to use their phones in their cars. We want to create a better way for them to do that. That is awesome, because I cannot tell you how many times I am running late to pick up my kid. Right. And I will furtively <laughs> try to text her, you sure. know, and I'm late message exactly. from a stop light, and I don't want to do that. Exactly, exactly. So you guys are making it possible to have canned messages? Well, the, the, the big functionality for us right now are there's three apps, and I'll be happy to show you how it works in practice. But really, it's about call management, uh, being able to initiate and receive calls easily, uh, navigation, which is very key, operating the vehicle, and then um, you know something that everybody likes to have is whatever MP3s or, or music they happen to be carrying on their phone, uh, they'd like to be able to play those easily on the radio as well. So I can show you very quickly okay. you know, how this works. Uh, I have a Sony head unit here, a Sony radio, that is enabled with the MirrorLink technology. You notice the icon there on the screen. And I have a Nokia phone that is also enabled, a Nokia smartphone that's also enabled with the uh, MirrorLink technology. Right now in the, in the version of, the, of MirrorLink that we are using, uh, the connection is made between the smartphone and the vehicle with a USB cable. Mm -hmm. And we'll set that here. So MirrorLink would be an app that you download for your smartphone. At the, uh, in version 1.0, which is what we currently have, it will be included with the, with the, uh, with the phone or it may be downloaded as a, as a separate app. Okay, yes. well that's a Nokia, so that's a Windows phone? No, this one is actually an older Nokia phone, so it's a previous okay. generation, but we are supporting Android as well. There's Android implementations that are available, and in the future, there will be Windows phones uh, from Nokia. As well as iOS? Unfortunately, um, Apple is not a member of the consortium yet, and we're still working on that. Okay, so eventually you're going to have all of the platforms exactly covered. that's Good. what we're that's what we're aiming for okay so I've launched the app on the phone I will launch on the uh, radio and what you see is basically a replication of the screens the nice thing here is that the information is much larger it's simplified it's easy to read it doesn't take much time away from concentrating on the road well, so, I love that menu. Yeah, that's nice. You can't get any easier exactly, than that. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's meant not, you know, meant to be very intuitive. Yeah. Yeah. So things like call. Okay. Yeah. And launching the call app. What you find are the usual suspects: a dialer, your contacts list, and recent called numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, the dialer again, very simple, very mm -hmm. large buttons, easy to push. Right. You don't have to do a lot of searching. Um, we go back uh, to the contacts list. All the contacts that currently reside on your phone, I can push the buttons here, there we go, uh, would be listed for you, and you could scroll through them and find them. And then, of course, if you wanted to call somebody, you could do so. I'm assuming if you've got voice 
activation voice commands on your phone, it'll work exactly. the same way. Exactly. So you That's don't even idea. have to go through that process. Right. Also, instead of using the touches on the uh, on the head units, you could mm -hmm. use uh, the steering wheel controls if those were connected to the to the radio. That is awesome. So again, keeping yeah. eyes on the road are, are what's important here. Uh, from the music side, you know, again, simplified interface meant to be very easy to use. And whatever MP3s you carry on your phone, again, you can search different ways. You can scroll through and uh, play them. Uh, you can also do album searches, you know, those types of things. It's all dependent upon the interface and how simplified. And then finally, uh, drive, which is a little unhappy because we're inside of a building. Okay, we can't really navigate so too much I'm going from to here. pull it into thinking that it's uh, it's happy. So give it just a second while it realizes that it can't see the sky. And it will launch. There we go. Oh, there we go. And, and again, you have your navigation app and the kinds of things, set destinations, you know, mm -hmm. go to a previously saved location, etc. Yeah. Um, I take it this will cost a lot less than, you know, the $800 or right. so that it would get to get a factory installed app. Right. So the, the nice thing here is especially uh, whatever you're used to using on your phone mm -hmm. is transportable to other MirrorLink head units. That's so if you, if you go on a business trip or a trip with family to another city and you rent a car that has a MirrorLink head unit, your nav, your call management, your music is already with you and can be used on the vehicle. That is great. Are there any plans to get a social media app? I would love voice activated right. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so what's coming down the road is we are in our next iteration of our work is enabling third party apps to come to this platform. Mm -hmm. And so what we'll see is allowing app developers to do um, you know whatever makes sense for the for the market but also is respectful of these driver distraction issues that we want to make sure to to deal with. So yeah, the ideas for you know Twitter or Facebook, of course, but uh, creating interfaces that are simplified, easy to use, and don't require a lot of workload from the driver uh, to operate. Hey, I'm Nicole with Livio, and I'm going to show you Livio Connect. It's the technology that's getting apps into cars. More specifically, we've gotten um, the TuneIn app into the Chevy Spark, which you can see um, just down the hall in South Holland. I actually tried that when, it, yes. uh, when they debuted the Spark, and oh, it's awesome. It's it's really cool. It's really exciting for us. We're a 20-person company, but we're making big technology that OEMs are using to stay up to speed with apps because apps are being made every day, thousands of them a day, and we're just helping them go quick. Okay, show me show me how it works. All right, so we're going to look at Livio Connect. Uh, for the purposes of this, this is not an iPad, this is your car stereo. Okay. So you're going to get in the car and it says, hey, Nicole Gellin's iPhone is here. You're going to pick it and we're pairing it just like you would um, with any Bluetooth device. It's just a pairing process. And uh, forgive me because we're in a trade show, Bluetooth connectivity is <laughs> a little tough. Um, and then it's going to say, hey, the stereo wants to be your friend, uh, you accept. And here's a list of all of the different apps that work in the car. And, um, so great. It's a great list. Um, and it's changing every day. So the exciting thing is not that apps can go in your car. If you have an aux in cord, you can plug it into your stereo head, you know, your headphone jack and you can listen to your music in the car. What's exciting is we're allowing your car to control the apps on your phone mm -hmm. so that you are driving safely and not putting yourself or other motors in danger. Um, that is so cool. We love that. Yes. So, for example, um, on the car stereo, you can see my MP3 collection. You can listen to the Livio Car Internet Radio, Pandora, TuneIn, um, and we'll look at my MP3s. So, you're driving, and instead of scrolling up and down on your phone, you're able to say, I want to look at artists. And let's see, Alex Clare, yep, would like to listen to him. And it's playing right now out of my. It's very loud in here, but it is yeah. coming out. We'll take your word for it. And I think you can hear it right now. So, um, you know, my phone has a tip-top cover. Very cool.